Hello, welcome back to part two of this week's Talking Europe on France 24. In this part of our programme, we're asking how is Europe doing on women's rights and gender equality? This to coincide with International Women's Day. Now, 21 of the EU's member states are in the top 30 in the world, according to the United Nations on gender equality. But inequalities do remain in both the member states of the EU and within the institutions. So where then is progress still needed? How can member states even up the gaps between the rights of women and men? And what role is there for the European Union itself? Well, on our panel today, uh, we have, uh, starting on my left, Ella Helen Fritzen, Swedish MEP, Vice Chair of the Socialist and Democrats Group at the Parliament, and you're also a member of the Women's Rights and Gender Equality Committee. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for being here. Across the table from you, we have Asita Kanko, a Belgian MEP from the uh, European Conservatives and Reformists Group. Uh, and you're a member of the Subcommittee on Human Rights. Thanks for joining us. And next to you, we've got one of just three male members of the Women's Rights and Gender Equality Committee, a rare breed, Ernest Utterson, Spanish MEP from the Greens Group. Thanks for joining us. No, thank you. <laughs> well, let's start off with a look at one European Union member state leader who has come to high office recently and her story has very much thrown a spotlight on issues of gender equality. Take a look. Named Prime Minister of one of the world's most developed countries at the age of 34, Sanna Marin has been leading Finland's governing coalition since last December. It's composed of five political parties, all with female leaders. The Prime Minister says that fact isn't a big deal in Finland. But all the same, Marin's age and her ascent to the Prime Minister's post got people around the world taking notice of the country. Finland is no stranger to gender equality in politics. It was the first state in the world where women could both vote and stand for public office. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the world's first female defence minister, Elizabeth Wren, was Finnish. Currently, 12 out of the 19 cabinet portfolios are led by women and they also make up 47% of Finland's parliament. According to the European Institute for Gender Equality, a gender-balanced parliament needs to have a 60-40 gender split. Finland scores much higher than the European average when it comes to women in politics, slipping only behind France and Sweden, but is significantly ahead of the lowest-rated EU states Hungary, Cyprus and Malta. Finland is also signatory to a string of key conventions aimed at combating issues like domestic violence and the trafficking of women. The government recently announced plans to grant the same parental leave to new mothers and fathers. Sanna Marin hopes the reform will get more men spending time with their newborns and achieve even greater gender equality in Finland. So there we go, a bit of a look at uh, Sanna Marin, the Finnish uh, Prime Minister, and uh, about the, uh, the situation of gender equality in Finland. Uh, I ought to say, uh, we of course have Helen Fritzen with us from Sweden. Uh, Scandinavia in general is seen as being very much uh, the, the good child of the European Union when it comes to gender equality. I cited that statistic in my introduction about how 21 of the member states are in the top 30 in the world for the UN in gender equality. So, everything okay? <laughs> no, everything isn't okay, but we have, good, we have done a good trip. Uh, since the 17th, we have built gender equality with reforms in Sweden. Uh, reforms for the balance between family and work, so you can share uh, the time between uh, mother and father and between women and men. Uh, we have also a lot of reforms for uh, the welfare system with the child care mm -hmm. uh, for the children. And uh, we also have a separate uh, taxation uh, for women and men. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, we have a lot of examples of reforms and I think it's important to build this sustainability city with reforms. Then we can reach uh, gender equality. Mm -hmm. Asita Kanko, do you think that in Europe we should be congratulating ourselves about the state of gender equality or inequality? I really hope we will not start congratulating ourselves because there is still a lot to be achieved. When we look around, um, you can uh, go to uh, offices or look at the figures, see how much difference there are between wages and uh, who is in charge actually in large listed companies. It's about 27% of women only in charge. If you look at the representation of women in politics and how they experience their life in politics and as a woman in politics, I can also see how, how 
hard it is, it, we still have so much uh, to do um, for, for women's rights. And, but there are some things going on. You know, we have for the first time a female president of the, of the European mm -hmm. Commission. But as I, uh, I said, it, this is like the icing on a cake that still needs to be baked because <laughs> on the, when you scratch that surface, you still have a lot of inequality beneath. And as Urta said, what are the key issues that you think should be looked at? Well, it's true that in the last legislature there was no strategy for gender equality. It was extremely shameful um, but, but for people to understand the European Commission has strategies for lots of things, from fisheries to industrial policy. I mean, not having one gender equality was really shameful. I think that this time, this mandate we will have one and this is extremely good news. Mm. And I think we have um, very big, big challenges. One of the first initiatives that the Commission will bring here is an initiative to fight against the gender pay gap. And I think the Parliament is very much uh, willing to work on it because I think this can be a, an, an important measure because the gender pay gap is still extremely high. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there are other areas where we need to, uh, to continue fighting. And one particular issue where I think we need to put the focus on is still on violence against women. Mm -hmm. There is this survey from the uh, Fundamental Rights Agency from some years ago saying that at least one third of women in the EU declares having suffered a, a violent episode in their lives, mm -hmm. which means that we have still a big, big way ahead of mm -hmm. us in terms of, of, of fighting violence. We need to continue ratifying the Istanbul Convention, which is blocked, and many other areas. But this is particularly an area where we think we need to work. We also have um, the FGM, uh, the end of female genital mutilation resolution um, that uh, has been adopted and uh, we've had the restorers, who are the girls from Kenya who almost won the Sakharov Prize and I'm very glad to participate in taking these initiatives and now we hope I truly hope that um, the content of the resolution, which is an ambitious uh, call for a strategy to put an end mm. to female genital mutilation, will feed also part of what uh, the, um, the strategy is going to be. And the commissioner has said it would, so I really hope mm. it's going to be there and that we'll continue building on the, the next uh, steps. But still, also in, in Europe and around the house here, you will hear people saying that all jobs are not for women. I heard some people uh, in, in Europe, you know, I was not born here, but I totally ne never knew I would hear these kind of things also in the continent of Simone de Beauvoir, saying that women, for some certain jobs, they will miss their children. I'm like, in which world do we live? So when we speak about gender equality, we need to know that it's about men and it's also about women. We cannot expect women to be always like, look like what, how people want them to look like, speak like what people want them to speak like, eat like what people want them to eat like, but it's the same applies to men. Why do we always want them to be, uh, be a gentleman, but also hold the door, uh, don't be a macho, be strong, but you know, be emotionally available, but don't cry. Uh, so we need to know that this is about equality on both sides mm. of one medal, and that has to fit and balance each other. Yeah, we're seeing nodding from our two other members <laughs> yeah. of the panel. There's a, a, a lot to take in, isn't there? Because there, so we, you know, the EU, it is a collection of 27 different member states. There yeah. can be very different attitudes uh, mm. among those member states. How does the EU work in this landscape of having such different cultures, different attitudes, different histories even. Is it possible for the EU to, how, or how is it possible for the EU to bring in gender equalising strategies, taking into account this, this very varied landscape culturally? A gender strategy on the European level, it becomes a tool for every member state to work with it and then they will, uh, they will solve it in a different ways in the member states, mm -hmm. but they can see three uh, very important issues and I agree uh, we must uh, uh, combating the violence against women and uh, we must uh, close uh, the gender pay gap uh, but we must also see that one third of the European women they have no work uh, they live uh, they have no independence mm -hmm. they have no pay and they have no rights mm -hmm. so I will see that we can we can, uh, we can reach this together with the climate change. Uh, because if we, uh, we do the Green Deal and we do it in a fair way and we do it in a uh, gender equality, with gender equality perspective, we can reach a sustainability society mm. where women can take place. And the benefit if, is, um, of course, for women, but also for men, for girls, but also for boys. Oh, well, it's interesting uh, talking about actual action that the EU can take. Yeah. Uh, one of the 
issues that we believe is going to come in is a wage transparency. Uh, Ernest Utterson, uh, we were talking about this just before the programme. How does that work? Is this making every single company in the EU publish the salaries of men and women or would that only be for a certain size of company? Do you think it would be accepted across all member states? Well, I, I hope so. You, you mentioned before uh, how to uh, work on gender equality with different realities. I think that we also learn from each other in different member states. And particularly with that directive, uh, we have the experience of Iceland, well, we're not talking EU here, mm. but in Iceland there is a law. Sort of a neighbour state. <laughs> exactly, a neighbour state. And there, there is a, a law that has been rather successful. And basically it's, it's to establish a threshold of, uh, of, from a certain number of economic activity. A company must have a public grid mm. of how it uh, has structured its, its, its salaries and also how it structures its categories. Because sometimes the gender pay gap comes from giving different categories to a man and a woman when they're actually doing the same job. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then you have a difference in their salary. So all this needs to get transparent. And thanks to that, thanks to these transparency measures, then uh, Iceland managed to close the gender pay gap almost uh, to, to zero mm -hmm. now, almost to zero. This is the reality. So I think having a directive that would oblige different member states to follow that example would be very, very important. And this is one of the initiatives I think we, we, we need to make a, a successful this legislature. Of course, we, I expect lots of problems in the council as we always encounter. The heads not, of state and government. The heads of state of government, I always do. We had the experience, for instance, with the, uh, with, um, um, the maternity leave and the work-life balance directive. We had a very aggressive campaign of business, business Europe against. Mm -hmm. This is the reality. So I can expect that that front will move again, even though this measure doesn't cost any, uh, any cent. I mean, it's really a measure that doesn't cost money. Well, I would like, just like to point out three things. First of all, uh, when you take the case of Iceland, it's of course a very good example, like many other Scandinavian countries. But yet, when you go in, and read recent figures about what women in Denmark feel about uh, the Me Too movement, then you have a clear answer. I think there is a confusion about what we are actually w willing to achieve and a lack of inclusion of men in it, but of all different groups in society. So do you think publishing I, the, the salaries yeah, I, wouldn't I be an effective we measure? need, all, you know, I, di I didn't see anyone coming to me and sh saying that in countries where it is, that only can be the only reason that is going to change things. So you need mm. to analyze things. I don't like to go very, very simple about, uh, about data. When you look at Iceland, they have that history. They were, look at the story of the parliament. Mm -hmm. That's how many women are in politics in Iceland and the top five worldwide. This all counts in what kind of decisions you are making politically. Mm -hmm. It will take all the perspectives into account. And second, you know, there is something, well, you pointed out the, di the diversity in the different member states. Of course, there are different, but there is one thing that is never going to change, is that wherever you find a woman who is feeling that there is inequality affecting her, she will feel the same suffering, she will feel the same pain, and she will have the same dreams. So we need to fix how we see parenting in society. Mm -hmm. We need to fix the stereotypes, as we're saying. We need to make sure that mm -hmm. women are also part of decision-making. How do we do that? Those are quite Through abstract education. things, though, aren't they? I suppose Ernest really Dawson is saying that publishing the wages is a very, very concrete measure. Yeah, that's what sometimes I see that people Takes will the say, emotion. Out of it. You know, I saw plenty of things that were published about FGM and yet people are still cut. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think that publishing a document or publishing anything is going as such to change things. I am from the business sector. I think we need to encourage women to negotiate their salaries. We need, we also already have mm -hmm instruments like the Sustainable Development Goals. We have SDG 5 that is actually pushing companies and mm -hmm. I saw companies working honestly on that. So we need to work together with them, not treat them as enemies. We need to sit together with companies and encourage them to be inclusive. Yes, of course, but we also need uh, political uh, decision making and the European Parliament is uh, very important for decision making uh, also in the member states of course and all the municipalities and so on but uh, we can see that we have different uh, points of view uh, when we discuss in the Parliament about gender equality we have parties from the, the right wing side that uh, they deny uh, this uh, this importance of gender balance honestly uh, I wouldn't sorry to interrupt but I wouldn't speak of gender equality speaking of left or right you know mm -hmm. I don't care whether people are left or right a woman is a but woman that's important and no that's totally not political nothing. institution it's totally, as I don't the believe, European Parliament yes, but when you speak we about are, women rights we when are, you polarize saying voted, these are right are, and these are left we are voted it doesn't, here this is not because the point. we are representing a political party yes that is why we need to represent for all me, the women it's, it's very important that I can say I'm representing a, a progressive 
uh, force in the SD group and we want to uh, move forward. We want to meet the future for the girls, for the women, for the Who men and for the boys. Who doesn't want to? You know, what I'm saying here is like, take an example of a f woman undergoing discrimination at work or undergoing yes. female gender or other kind of violence or sexism on the street or whatever, or even then sexism we have, in this have political Who, who decisions. cares? Who cares whether the person who is defending her is from the left or from the right or whatever? Right. Well, one it last is, word, then perhaps you know, from Ernest it, it is, just before This is just adding some button note. Well, this is not one important last word for me. I don't care who is saving well, me. I just want the people program. to move forward. Well, I think, uh, not two things I wanted to comment. Well, there is a, a, a problem with a rising far right attacking gender equality in Europe. I mean, in the last legislature, we had a member here saying that women should earn less because they were inferior. That mm -hmm. was a member from a far right party in this chamber saying that. So there is, I think we have... This a, is we, Acceptable. Exactly. But there are also members of e other groups who exactly. say that you but, can apply but, uh, Sharia in the UK, no, that you can have people getting no, but, married but, uh, but, uh, with several women. You have all this but, also but, but, as well. But, 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 that you can pay back for course, not, high men reconstruction. Of, this is happening in Belgium. Of course, but I'm, I'm not saying that that uh, that it are individual cases. I'm saying that the, the rising of the far right is really a problem with the backlash on, in terms of gender equality. I think there's a general trend that we need to be aware of. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that, of course, on the gender transparency or other legislation that we may pass, legislation doesn't solve the problem mm -hmm. that we all know. Mm -hmm. We have a very good law in Spain against gender-based violence, and we have a big That's problem a with point. violence. That's Absolutely. true. But laws help advancing things. Okay. That helps. And public policy is useful. So yes. I'm sure, for instance, if we manage to get the directive yeah. on gender pay transparency, yeah. it will not solve everything. And but things will, will move forward, at, right. I hope. Well, we'll end it perhaps with that hopeful note from you. There is, of course, so much to discuss in this. And we're going to wait and see what comes out from the Commission's okay. proposals, yes. what gets put in place in the Member States. Thank you all very much for this very lively discussion for International Women's Day. I'd like to point out for our viewers, there is also International Men's Day. It's every year on November the 19th. <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Thanks very much for watching Talking Europe. Uh, we'd like to see you very soon for more European news on France 24.